Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Ayurveda's weekly series of case presentation, Talk Evidence at Ayurveda. Today we have with us our esteemed team of doctors from Ayurveda Domblu, Dr. Reshma TK, Dr. Jayavidya, Dr. Zankana Bhut, who will be presenting a case of treat to target rheumatoid arthritis, a case which showcases excellent changes in biomarkers and disease emission based goal driven approach. So over to you doctors for the presentation. Good evening. We are going to present the diagnosed case of rheumatoid arthritis uh, through the Ayurvedic approach through Ahara, Aushada and Panchagarma interventions. So we are going to present the case of rheumatoid arthritis. The patient who is an age of 33 years uh, having the diagnosed of rheumatoid arthritis approach Ayurveda hospital with presenting complaints, she's having low back pain and the bilateral knee joint pain and difficulty in walking since seven years. She's also complaining of upper back pain along with the pain of her spinal muscles since 10 years. And since three years, she's suffering from pain over the wrist joint and also occasional constipation. And when you come to the history of presenting illness, and she is since seven years, I already told about the complaints. She's suffering from low back pain, bilateral knee joint pain, and wrist pain, and she's feeling difficulty in walking. She approached allopathy hospitals and has she already taken some of the allopathic medications such as uh, ketoflam and also tryptomy. But she didn't want to continue the allopathic, uh, the allopathic medication because she needed good result or so good relief from uh, her present condition. So she wishes to take Ayurvedic treatment. So she approached Ayurveda hospital for the better treatment. And when we go to the past history of this patient, she is having this RA since seven years. She is diagnosed as RA, and she also met with an road traffic accident since 2018. For that accident, she has a slight pain in that wrist joint. Also, she is having the history of constipation since 10 years. And when you go into the personal health parameters, his her is poor and it is very disturbed due to stress and she is having a mandakni and also her vitality is very low. When we go into those parameters, we can identify she is in our condition and we go to the Ashtasthana Pariksha because it is very needed for the treatment. Ashtasthana Pariksha and Dashavita Pariksha plays an important role in treating a illness. So when we go into this Ashtasthana Parisha, we notice the abnormality in that mala, mala because she is having an irregular motions. She is feeling constipation in some days and sometimes she is feeling when the motion comes incomplete evacuation. So the mala, when we come go to the Dashvita Pariksha, the mala is abnormal in nature. And also in the we, when we do the Dashvita Pariksha, the sattva is very avara in nature and ahara shakti, it is very avara nature. She is having improper digestion and she didn't take the food at the right time. So she is, uh, ahara shakti is disturbed and the vayama shakti is avara. So comparing these parameters, according to, uh, for Dashvita Pariksha, the mala is disturbed, all other parameters are normal. And when we comparing the Dashvita Pariksha, this Sattva and Ahara Shakti is abnormal in nature. And also we can identify that so, so the Aknibala and the Sattva is Avara in nature. And I will hand over the presentation to Dr. Reshma for explaining the Shrodo Pariksha and Nidana, etc. Good evening, uh, all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jayavitya. Before starting the presentation, I convey my sincere gratitude to uh, Shankara ma'am and Rajiv sir for including me in this presentation. Um, Dr. Jayavidya told about, like, uh, already told about the Dashavita Pariksha and Ashtasthana Pariksha. Uh, we all know that uh, the Pariksha plays an important role in, uh, in, in role in deciding the treatment as treatment, external treatment as well as internal treatments. According to Charaga, it, there was a quotation like, Roga Madho Parikshe Tado Anantara Maushadam. So the importance of Pariksha is very much clear. That is, we need to analyze, we need to go through this 
a particular parisha in detail before assessing, before going to the treatment, whether it is internal or external. So with your permission, sir, I am moving to my presentation. Uh, we can move into the Shodo Pariksha. These are some specific lakshana we listed after this, after uh, by analyzing uh, by analyzing the patient health status by Darshanas Prashna and Prashna. Uh, th there is some lakshana which is not included in this presenting complaints. We listed by um, by the time by the time of case taking. The first set of lakshana include Aruji, Achirna, Nausea, that is Kralasa. The specific lakshana, which the sthana of this lakshana is lakshana is uh, mashaya and sthanika samprapti, that is, uh, as per Dr. Jaya told, told, already told that the patient is having constipation, uh, constipation since 15 years. So there is apana vada vaikunya in her body. There is a long duration. So it will trigger samana vada vaikunya. There is a vada kova. Along with that, there is Pajaka Pitta Vaigunya. Pitta can be vitiated in two ways. Either its Tikshna Guna will increase or its Apya Bhava will increase. In this particular case, we can, we can say that the Apya Bhava of Pitta increase that will that, that resulted into the Ama formation or Utklesha Avastha in Amashaya that will result into a resavaha or un resavaha and andavaha srotoroda and that will cause the symptoms as aruji achirna and nausea so while describing the vamana virejana virejana purvadina bakshana charaga says chakrapani says that utkleshanam pitta sevaknyam we generally we uh, we use the term kleshana in relation with kapha, but we should uh, we should consider the term kleshana with regarding to pitta also. So there is uh, samana vada vaigunya along with apya bhava of pajaka pitta increases. It will result into a sama formation inside the amashaya and resa and annavaha strodo dushti that will leads to aruji achirna and nausea. Next set of symptoms include Sandhi, Asti, Anu, Asti, Shulam and Gatra Stambam. Like Gatra Stambam in the sense uh, morning stiffness. Gatra Stambam in the sense morning stiffness. That is uh, Sandhi, Asti, Shulam. The patient uh, is having like uh, mainly the patient is having uh, symptoms in the uh, uh, in, in her parva, that is in, in her upper and lower limb, pain is there. Along with that, Anu Astishulam, that it, the distal interphalangeal joints are interphalangeal joint pain is there. Along with that, she had morning stiffness. So we can infer that the these are these are the symptoms which which is same as her presenting complaints. So there is a uh, these symptoms will appear uh, is appeared due to dosha dhatu uh, dosha dhatu vaikunya that is like asti dushti asti dushti is mainly um, mainly due to her food habits and all like an external factor is there which can be detailed in the later session like uh, resa dushti is there asti dushti is there uh, macha dushti is there along with this Vimarga Gamana of Vada occurs. There is an a case of Vada Shonada itself. So there is an Avarana of Recta, Avarana of Recta to Vada. So there is Sandhi, Asti, Anu Asti Shula, and Gatra Samba occurs. And the third criteria is Adi Sveda and Staulia. Here in this patient, we can see that there is a like there is a common uh, along with Vada Shonada, Vada Shonada pathogenesis, a Staulia Samprapti is like they are going parallel. Like she, she was having this Adisveta, Staulia, and some of the Staulia lectionary, like, um, like decreased Ulsaham, uh, Daurgandam is there, Adisvedam is there, Jatila is there. So apart uh, apart from this, like speak Stana Uthara, uh, like uh, when uh, compared to Chalas fix Tana Uthara. So while well, considering the BMI also, there, there is some like, it is an overweight category, but we, we cannot say that, we cannot relate it, it with modern uh, parameters. I just say that it has been like, as per Charaga, the lectures of Staulia, that is uh, Adi Sveta, this Chalas fix Tana Uthara, um, Daur Gandhya, 
like jadyada is present in this particular patient so we can infer that there is a parallel uh, pathogenesis of vata rakta along with sthaunya and it, it it is it may be due to the improper sara formation the mainly the sara formation is the function of vyala vata and uh, pajaka pitta i already told you that pajaka pitta normal function of pajaka pitta is hampered always that the vyana vada is vyana vada function is also affected by this sama saman samana vada dushti and it will create improper sara formation that is ayadhavat sara that will results into ayadhavat dhatu poshanam that will cause prayena medho vrithi and that is results into sthaulya formation so in total we can infer that the patient is having rasa dushti symptoms include aruji achirna nausea and ankamarda that is rasa dushti the reason behind this rasa dushti is chintyanam cha achintana that is she is in a, she is living in a stressful uh, period since her childhood itself or in her school days itself she is having this uh, stressful atmosphere and uh, along with that she is consuming the uh, food and all that which that will cause that cause vitaha type of food that we can detail further so the rasadushti nidana is there so we can directly uh, pick up the rasadushti symptoms from the patient itself next we can move on to rakta dushti rakta dushti the disease itself is vada shonida without rakta dushti the vada shonida doesn't exist so rakta dushti is there the nidana include abhishanti stula guru aharas this specifically indicate specifically mentioned in rakta dushti the rakta dushti nidana and it includes the it, it, it exhibit the symptoms like the like, apart from vada shonida she is having like muka dushika the color of it is like a uh, reddish that is reddish so we can infer that it is a sign of rakta dushti itself next we can move on to the medo dushti medo dushti lakshanas include adi sveda stavya etc and for medo dushti uh, medo dushti nidana we can say that she is actually a fitness freak so she used to do vigorous kind of exercises irrespective of irrespective of her health she cannot uh, she, she, she without considering her health status she always uh, doing the same like vigorous kind of exercises so we can say that adhik vyayama or adhik samshobha that is the reasons behind this medo dushti and that will cause the symptoms itself and next is asti dushti asti dushti we can say that her diet there is a specific vata prakopa diet ruksha kashaya guna ruksha guna kashaya rasa vata prakopa diet is the so this vata prakopa diet will trigger asti asti bahasrodo srodas and it will cause asti bahasrodo dushti along with she met with an accident in 2018 at that time there is no not that much problem there is a risk joint pain but we can we can we can include that apikadam into it and it is it, it is one of the triggering factor for this particular disease and it is also a uh, contributory factor for this asti baha srodo dushti uh, dushti karana so the symptoms include kesha shada and sandhi asti shula that is include like parva shula and all i hope you all you understand about the srodo pariksha next we can move on to the nidana panchaka nidana panchaka includes first nidana nidana like is ahara vihara manasika agantu jan nidana ardagara in ahara there, there is some specific uh, food that is amla rasa pradana mainly in take of inflammatory food that is amla rasa pradhana food food like uh, she used to take uh, one cup of tea plus one boxes of almonds or dry fruits as her breakfast so this is the so it will cause the inflammation in the body it, this routine including her diet her lifestyle her exercise pattern she is following since from her childhood itself it is not uh, like about 7 years or 10 years she is following the same pattern pattern of lifestyle so 
there is akala bochana means there there is all these are all vada pragopaka nidana next we can move on to the vihara that is irregular meal that is akala bochana akala bochana we all know that kala bochana arogya karanam that itself is akala bochana will cause uh, as asamyata or like uh, disruption in our normal function of dosha dadu and mala and sleep timings is also where is, there is some disruption that is like diva sopnam normally she used to get up in 10 am in the morning so that is diva sopnam is there and her sedentary lifestyle she is she is like an uh, like an office office staff she is using this prolonged she was in the prolonged sitting posture and these are like atyasana sthiti is there and one more thing i want to add is pravilamba pada this other nidanas are like very samanya nidanas are but while considering pravilamba nidana it is specifically indicated for vata rakta it is specifically vyadi hetu that is uh, hanging uh, hanging legs for prolonged period of time within within a higher duration that is a chronic type like a prolonged time period we can say that it is one among the it is the main reason behind hetu next we can move on to the manasika bhava that is stress there is ati chintana man ati vyagur she, she she is having this anxiety problems in her anxiety or like stressful problems in her childhood itself so uh, so that may be a contributing factor to this disease and akantucha akantucha in the sense i already discussed that she met with an accident in 2018 it was not a bigger one it was a light but we can include that into the, that into the pathogens of disease it is it was also a one among the triggering factor and next we can move on to the nidanarthagara that is co existing medical condition that is she was having this constipation since 15 years that for this constipation normally she used to take some homeopathic medication as laxative she did she doesn't change her uh, food or lifestyle for correcting this disease she was used to take that laxative only so this vibanda or abhanavada vaikunya is there to is the main root cause for this particular disease manifestation and along with that there is a stavulya it will also trigger the disease disease samprapti and all next we can move on to the purva rupa of disease that is premonitory signs it includes mandakini aruji and vibandam next the rup manifestation of the disease that is manibandha shulam manibandha shulam anu asti shulam that is in in the distal interphalangeal joints she had pain and janu janga uru kadi amsa manya shulam that is the entire parva parva rup parvanam she was having the pain in in her shakha itself and that prastambham that is mainly in the morning hour she was having the stiffness while discussing with, with this uh, case with her she was told me like that when the winter season keeps the pain pain on pain will increase and when it is summer she will she will be okay or the pain is on the lesser side and along with that when she applies some oil to the body to get rid of this pain the pain will not reduce so by but she applies some hot bag or something like that there is there is some reduction in pain so we can infer that upashaya there is ushna ruksha upashaya and she the snigdha anupashaya in this particular uh, case next we can move on to the samprapti itself as we already told you the nidana factors it includes akala bochanam uh, akala bochanam ruksha um, in, increased intake of tea that is uh, kashaya rasa pradhan five to six times she used to take uh, tea in a day so akala bochanam increased intake of tea uh, increased intake of tea and uh, akala shayanam this will also uh, uh, cause cause her this ruksha kashaya rasa pradhana ahara will uh, will result into this uh, samana vada dushti along with that pachaka pitta dushti it will cause uh, like anna vaha 
and rasa baha srodo dushti that i already mentioned that there is uh, like uh, there is some apya bhava of pitta increases and there is koshta siddha vadakopa so there is anya baha and rasa baha srodo roda that will produce the symptoms like hrillasam aruji and uh, loss of appetite that is avipaga means there and this on the, this will result into sama kapha formation and on the other side she used to take some like amla rasa prakara dravyas and uh, along with that divas of namis there and uh, food intake before attaining jirna harakshanam she always uh, follow our clock to fix the uh, time to fix the food time so we all we all are aware of that jirna harakshanam like vadanulomyam vadanulomyam should pipasa like uh, samyak mutra purisha pravrti udgara shuddhi sharira laghavam so she uh, we can uh, say that nidana like uh, two ways that is akala bhojana ways the increased intake of tea is there that is kashaya rasa predominant that is you she used to take uh, five to six cups of tea per day so there is a, like there is a ruksha kashaya rasa predominant uh, food she used to take that for a prolonged uh, prolonged time and there is like akala shayana ways there so this will cause samana this means lenkana ruksha lenkana diet will results into samana vada dushti and along with pajaka pitta dushti it will create anna vaha and rasa vaha srodo dushti and it will leads to hrillasam uh, aruji and avipakam that is aruji in the sense she is having uh she is having uh, she, she doesn't have doesn't have the desire to take food like charaga uh, during in sidistana chakrapani says that the definition of aruji is sarvada anicca just same as that she do, she she is very much she, she doesn't want to take food like she doesn't want to take uh, doesn't have the desire to take food so she was having this hrillasam uh, aruji and avipakam and that will result into sama kapha sama kapha formation and on the either side she is following a di- diet which is amla rasa pradhana diva sopna and she she used to take drink drinking water in the morning hours itself that water is prepared in the last night so so sudha that told that that water which is prepared in the last night which is to be consumed during next morning it will create tridosha kopa so we can infer that this this will also uh, this will also trigger our pitta kapha and that will results into pitta kapha dushti and that is always uh, in relation with along with that the rakta dushti is also occurs due to this uh, abhigada that is an accident pro traffic accident so rakta dushti is occurs and due to this annavaha rasavaha srodo dushti there is ajirna ajirna there is, due to this ajirna there is ama formation that is koshtasrita vada this koshtasrita vada along with this rakta dushti that this vada got avrda that is vada its avarana by rakta or pitta kapha will leads to sangha of vada that is normal gadi of vada will obstructed and that will results into vimarga gamana of vada and it will start it will get stana samshraya in asti sandhi and manifest our symptoms like asti sandhi shula anu asti shula like to parvanam that that and one more thing this particular koshtas to the vada will this uh, this uh, will trigger the vyana vada and pachaka pitta which is mainly uh, uh, crucial role in the sara formation so uh, the improper sara formation occurs that is ayadhavat dhatu poshanam and dhatu puranam that will be a pray that will be re- leading to prayana metho vritti that will cause overweight or sthulata in, in in her body so this is the and along with that we can say that this koshtas to the vadakopa or samana vada vaikunya will be due to the apana vada vaikunya which is to, which is like 
she's having this dipanda since 15 years so that that is also one the reason behind this koshtasrita or samana vata vaikunya can be related to our primary like uh, the articular lympho lymph uh, phase that is initial phase we can relate it with that is like in digestion phase like on achirna avastha we can relate it with periarticular lymph phase and there is a transition phase and later on there is an articular phase that is on the uh, like symptoms manifest whenever the symptoms manifest we can face call it as an articular phase itself uh, this all this all, all about nidana panchaka nidana to samprapti next uh, we can move on to the condition of, at the time of admission condition of the patient at the time of admission as already discussed appetite is low bowel is constipated and she was using the homeopathic medicine and sleep was poor due to some disturbed uh, disturbed and quality was very less and while doing the clinical examination uh, there is muscular muscular system is definitely affected and while doing this there is grade 2 tenderness over her lumbosacral paraspinal muscles and grade 1 tenderness over her trapezius muscle and while going to the lumbosacral spine a range of motion is affected and along with that there is grade 2 tenderness over l4 l5 l5 s1 level as well as left si joint there is grade 2 tenderness also her cervical spine that is grade 1 tenderness over c4 c5 level and she is also having headache uh, tendon, at that time, there is grade one tenderness over her for frontal and maxillary sinus itself. This is the lab. Next, we can move on to the laboratory investigation at the treatment starting. And the CCP was 24.75. Rheumatoid factor was like 87.22, which is on the higher side. HB is 13.0 gram percent, 13 gram percentage. So hence we can we can sum up the disease as diagnose the disease as Vada Shonita in allopathy, it is a rheumatoid arthritis. Risk factors, this can be lead to aggravation of symptoms is there, and along with that, the we can it will lead to some complication of rheumatoid arthritis. It will lead to some stowlism rapsi itself. And thank you, sir. I uh, invite Jangana ma'am to continue the uh, presentation. Thank you, Dr. Reshma, Dr. Jayavidya. Good evening, everyone. As Dr. Jayavidya and Dr. Reshma has already laid a clinical picture of the presentation of this patient uh, with all the clinical findings, assessment of all the uh, parameters, Ayurveda, as well as the allopathy parameters, laying down of Nidana. And while we have drawn the Samprapti, now we come to the Chikitsa Siddhanta, medical management strategy that was adopted. Before we begin that, I would like to share uh, a point that while we have, why we have chosen this case where we, uh, where I would like to draw your attention is that the approach chosen to treat the case of rheumatoid arthritis is treat to target. So while we are defining the Chikitsa Siddhanta, the objectives that are, are to define the targets. The targets are in terms of various metabolic factors, metabolites, which include ama, agni, which was manda, doshas, which are involved, subdoshas that are involved, number of srotuses that are involved, as well as correlating to that, the biomarkers that have been found to be elevated. So considering this uh, compilation of understanding of doshas, dushyas, status of agni level of ama these are all the points of uh, points which were targeted to plan the chikitsa keeping this in mind chikitsa siddhant which was applied was from charak samhita chikitsa sthan chap chapter 29 where it talks about margavarod because of kapha and vayu and with that how Initially, if a snehanam or a bromhanam, if it would have been done, how it would have been fatal. Rather than that, we chose a route to carry out adequate and appropriate rukshana. Followed by that, virechanam was carried out. External applications of seka, abhyanga, pradeha was carried out. And the shmul, shrutam, shiram, which is supposed to be a potent analgesic 
as the references sadhya shul nivaranam that was carried out through a principle of parisheka which was done we also adopted the dietary principle as per charak samhita where uh, puran yava godhum shali shastik all these things were mugd mas masur all this were used in form of yusha with adequate amapachanam langhanam and sroto shodhanam by look, looking into the parameters of amatvam and niramatvam adequate vatanulomana and vatahara approach was carried out as we go along you would see that we were not able to complete vastis because of our physiological break because of our menstrual cycle and other constraints however till virechanam the treatment plan is completed patient is under review and there is a plan for further uh, continuation of treatment with yoga vasti Uh, drawing your attention here on the metabolic points where well while we focus on the ama we found elevated esr crp which is directly correlating to the level of inflammation focus on impaired agni in terms of weight gain whr change in her bmi kapha vriddhi again in terms of her overall uh, uh, erythropoietric measurements that are there pitta and rakta dushti is highlighted as in patient having low rbc low pack cell volume low mcv mchc low transferrin all that uh, and vatavarana where we could see her ntccp which was highly elevated keeping this in mind for each of these targets there was an intervention amapachanam agni deepanam sro uh stages of so pathya punarnavadi kashayam kaishora guglu gandharva hastadi erandam vayu gulika uh, was administered doctor we missed the last 2 minutes there was your line was down i think so if you could repeat what you're telling you could yes sir so uh, keeping uh, these ayurveda metabolic checkpoints ama agni kapha vritti pitta rakta dushti and vatavarana keeping that in mind correlating biomarkers were analyzed and were tracked with that each of the intervention that was planned was with uh, with a focus to achieve amapachanam agni deepanam sroto shodhanam and vatanulomana in sequence at each of those phase of treatment these were the things that were targeted during this course of time she was on internal medications pathya punarnavadi kashayam kaishora gugulu gandharva astadi erandam and vayu gulika was prescribed she had undergone chuna pinda swedam valuka swedam had undergone dhanyamla dhara dhanyamla keli sarva uh, sadyo virechanam external uh, applications with janu vasti griva vasti kati vasti and after adequate uh, amapachanam after adequate shodhana only after that she was qualified for sthanik shashtik shali pind swedam the reason being you could see in her uh, uh, nidanas there was a history of road traffic accident and after getting into uh, from the transition phase to the articular phase 
there was quite a lot of degeneration that was seen in her um, uh, investigations that were found. So apart from the inflammatory rheumatoid etiology, being a patient for longer time, the articular phase had a lot of degeneration. So keeping that in mind, adequate uh, snehanam and bruhanam was also done. But as you could see, it was not done for a longer period. It was done for two counts to ensure that she gets into that phase and it's prepared for the next line of yoga vasti. So keeping this in mind, the treatment medications, as you can see here, in rukshana uh, phase, rukshanam, langhanam, and pachanam was carried out, sroto shodhanam, followed by vatahara, the external therapies are for symptom alleviation and also keeping in mind that there was an articular destruction that was happening. So adequate brahmana was carried out and the shmulkshira kashaya as laid in the siddhanta, a sadhya shul nivaranam uh, was also carried out. She has been posted for yoga vasti coming month and she is continuously in review with us and she is clinically doing well with her last biomarkers also under control. So, keeping this in mind, these are uh, her uh, during uh, treatment, the level of outcomes that were achieved, wherein she came with a pain of around seven to eight, was around four on 10, two to four on 10. Uh, also to mention the time that she was admitted was extremely cold and damp in Bangalore. Irrespective of that, she did well, although her upshaya and upshaya was there, but she was under the cover of treatment and medicines. All of these things, as you can see here, uh, the range of movement uh, at each of the points have significantly improved. Some of the standard outcome scales that we had used IKDC, WOMAC, keeping in mind the degeneration of the articular destruction, Aberdeen's low back scale, uh, uh, headache uh, impact scale, and also uh, these are the markers that are there and the DAS score for number of joints. So DAS 28.3, the scale that was used where she presented with a moderate presentation of 4.53, tender joints 11, swollen joints 2 at the time of presentation. And post that, she had uh, cleared all, except uh, it again, as per the calculation, it still remains at the moderate disease. But as you can see, tender joints were 5. There were none of the swollen joints. Swollen joints were 0. She, was, she is advised to go ahead with Pathya Punar Navadi Kashayam, Punar Navadi Guglu, Dashmul Harita Kilehyam, Dhanvantram Gulika, Avipati Churnam, and Gandhatailam. Also, some external applications have been advised. So, keeping this uh, case in mind, we would like to share with you key takeaways that rheumatoid arthritis is an immune mediated inflammatory disease as laid down in the allopathy system in the conventional medicine. But here we can see from an Ayurveda perspective as well that immune response, inflammatory response comes by the presence of ama, especially uh, ama of both the levels, chataragni as well as dhatu agni, janya ama, which is created. And this we can see that it is characterized by auto antibody production, anti CCP RA factors, where there is chronic synovial inflammation, hyperplasia, cartilage, and bone, bone destruction, as well as various systemic complications could be present. Predictive biomarkers. Uh, CRP, ESR, although they are used, but from the studies uh, that are published, they still remain inadequate to form a clinical decision perspective. The reason that this is standard and conventionally chosen. So apart from that, our prediction should not only be based on these biomarkers, but as we spoke about the target uh, areas from an Ayurveda perspective of ama, agni, kapha, 
pitta and rakta dushti that is there that also should be considered in totality when we form a clinical decision the loss of immune tolerance that precedes the onset of inflammation in the joint is thought to represent a key process in RA pathogenesis. So the uh, periarticular lymphoid phase, that is one what allopathy calls it, we call it as the first level of AMA, which is by the diet and lifestyle, which gets into the phase of AMA pakvashaya. That is where is the key cause for inflammation. Contributing multifactorial nidanas lead to a tissue microenvironment is supposed to be the root cause of all these metabolic perturbations and systemic inflammation. While allopathy uh, system of medicine does a great work in symptom alleviation, pain management, when it comes to maintaining the disease, use is through biologicals, immunosuppressants in a graded fashion, which helps to keep the inflammation at CQS, which remains the key uh, medicine, is to address the inflammation. But it doesn't address all, like all uh, compassing uh, parameters that lead to that microenvironment. So treat to target Ayurveda paradigm is of defining targets clinical to ensure that the clinical manifestation, there is low disease activity, root cause signaling pathways. That is, we saw here in this case, two major pathways where one was Samanavata, Pachak Pitta Dushti, the other was the Apana Dushti, Rakta Dushti happening independently. So identifying and then leading to so identifying that root cause signaling path from an Ayurveda perspective, very important because it helps to thereby relate biomarkers. We may not choose anything randomly, but keeping this pathways in mind, we would choose relate, uh, related conventional biomarkers and thereby aim to prevent the progression, sequel and complications. Also consider coexisting medical condition, rogi, rog, rogi avastha for best of chikitsa outcomes to be kept in mind. It is also very important that when we lay down a chikitsa plan for a case like this, we have a phase-wise targeted approach. We begin with adequate amapachanam, carry out agni dipanam and sroto shodhanam. Here in this case, we are yet to see a change in Pitta Dushti and a greater Vata control. We have found like significant change from 87 to 25, her inflammatory RA factor has come down. NTCCP has a very important role and relevance of NTCCP is to see that the disease progression is under control. So here I would like to show uh, the standard, this is a reference from uh, rheumatology guidelines that are laid down, that what is a treat to target and how do they approach this, where when there is active target, the main target is to ensure to adapt a therapy according to a disease, use it for one to three months, measure it, ensure that the patient is under remission, again, ensure if the disease relapses, monitor, change the treatment. That is how it goes. Versus that, Ayurveda way of looking into treat to target would be to identify the right target, therefore the biomarkers. This is a common disease modifying anti-rheumatic disease um, um, pathway where most recommended is hydro, hydroxychloroquine followed by sulfasalazine followed by methotrexate and leflunomide, which is least recommended because of its side effects. While there are many major um, complications of uh, rheumatoid arthritis, which are known, we would like to highlight a few of the new comorbidities which have come over a period of time. These are subcutaneous nodules, there is extensive pulmonary involvement which happens in these patients. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is something which is very common 
with RA patients. Persistent hypogammaglobulinemia without infection is also because of the immune uh, tolerance, a low immunity that is there. And also because patients mostly are on immunosuppressants. There is non-tuberculous mycobacterial lung disease. So these are some of the, uh, because Ayurveda, uh, physician, we as physicians see a lot of RA patients. We should also keep in mind some of these rare comorbidities of rheumatoid arthritis, or we should also consider them so that if there are any risk factors that we would want to consider to prevent in a given patient. So here we would like to pause and uh, would invite all your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback. It was an excellent presentation by Dr. Reshma, Dr. Jaya, and also Dr. Jankana. My feeling is, you know, in South India, they take, I'm from South India, of course, they take rheumatoid arthritis as a, you know, Vatashtonita. But in Jamnagar, in Jaipur, National Institute of uh, Ayurveda, in uh, Banaras Hindu University, in all these places, we have a lot of discussion to understand whether rheumatoid arthritis is actually Amavata or Vatashwanita. So what is your view on this particular you know, subject? So uh, the documentation of Vata Rakta and Amavata in Ayurveda Samhitas, as you see, are at different timeline. Amavata was not mentioned directly by in Charak Samhita. You can see that presence came much later, like Chakradat has told about it. So one is giving the timeline of the medical condition that is there, which was much contemporary. And coming from the Jamnagar school of thought, I did have, like you, as you said, like uh, that difference of opinion which was there when it comes to correlating rheumatoid arthritis to Amavata and Vata Rakta. But the key point is that where Amavata from different types of arthritis, inflammatory arthritis, reactive arthritis. It falls into that category of just the first layer of connective tissue inflammation, which is there. While we, when we look into vata rakta, when we get into gambhir vata rakta, uttana vata rakta, and the description of charaka and chakrapani, it look it pinpoints and it makes us to think about the greater autoimmunity, the concept of formation of antibody, the formation of markers which are there and treatment principle which is laid down. You could see that that correlates very well to kind of rheumatoid arthritis presentation which is there. Well, Amavata mostly could be the seronegative type of rheumatoid arthritis, or it could be mostly inflammatory or reactive arthritis. So when we look into Vatarakta and get into that, I would correlate currently this case and kind of rheumatoid presentations with tish connective tissue and when biomarkers with other complications like uveitis or other organs when involved, I would correlate it with Vatarakta. But anyway, you know, we have done a lot of uh, work on rheumatoid arthritis and, uh, you know, uh, the, you know uh, some kind of research we have done in four years. You know, in that, you know, we have taken Ama Vata is actually Ama and Vata. Ama is very, very essential in rheumatoid arthritis. And, uh, you know, uh, Vata and Rakta are these two, you know, the, one is the Dushya, another one is the, the, this one, Dosha. These two are actually more in Vata Rakta. In Vata Rakta, usually, you know, the, my feeling is actually whatever, you know, we have, you know, understood, whatever, you know, we discuss with uh, many, many scholars, 
you know, we have understood that, you know, Vatarata should be taken as a doubt, you know, and then, you know, this particularly uh, Ama Mata should be taken as uh, this one. A lot of discussions went on, you know, in Germany or everywhere, and then they decided, even in, uh, you know, Arat Singh, you may be knowing Arat Singh, he was also of the opinion of, you know, Ama Mata should be taken as, you know, it is, we cannot actually say that Ama Mata is rheumatoid arthritis. It is, you know, we cannot say that, you know, uh, Vata Rakta is rheumatoid arthritis. It is similar to that. We can say only similar to that. We cannot say that it is actually, but most of the symptoms of, is it, of course, what I have not explained, you know, Ama Mata, that I agree. Only this Amavata has been explained only in the 8th century. After 8th century, it has been explained. Madhavindana was the first person actually to explain you know, this particular uh, disease. Probably the disease is not so much, you know, only Ama and Vata, they have explained in Grahani Chikitsa, you know, in, uh, in Chalaka Samhita, 15th chapter, they have explained actually, you know, Ama, but Amavata word has not been used. Vata Rakta has been used, but all the symptoms of Vata Rakta, Vata and Rakta, both are actually, you know, uh, there. But anyway, this is a subject of discussion, so, you know, in so North, keep... in North, anywhere, you know, they, recently we had a discussion with the, even, uh, you know, uh, director of, uh, uh, in, uh, this one, the director of Ayurveda, uh, All India, uh, you know, Ayurveda Institute, they also, they say, that it is actually Amavata as rheumatoid arthritis. We had a lot of discussion about this. So, Dr. Bhatt, uh, while this uh, uh, point is open for so many years that whether we consider it as Amavata or Vata Rakta, so I would like to know from your experience and expertise that if you would have considered this case as Amavata, how would you have treated it differently from the uh, Chikitsa Siddhant that was laid. What would you have done differently? Chikitsa Siddhanta is you know, almost the same actually, because we will have to take Ama, as you were also telling that Ama was the main thing. In case of you know this uh, Vata Rakta, Ama is the secondary one. Rakta and Vata are the primary one. So yes. we have to treat kind of, of course, these people because of, uh, you know, the, only the diagnosis is different, but the line of treatment may be almost the same. Ama Chikitsa, the, the, you know, Agni Chikitsa, the Shoto Shodhana, all these things are actually the same. But Ama is given greater importance actually in case of rheumatoid arthritis, what I have, uh, mm -hmm. this one. Uh, so, uh, we do have... you also see a point that where we get seronegative arthritis, seronegative yeah. presentation of rheumatoid arthritis would be considered as ama, whereas where there is seropositivity, there is already rakta which is involved. Why should not mm -hmm. that be correlated with rheumatoid arthritis, no, no. Vata rakta? No. Actually, can, actually, can I request one thing? It would be good to also get the feedback. Maybe you should have a separate session. In fact, this was one of my first questions. I think the uh, I wanted to comment on this comment between Amavata and Vata Rakta. It would have been good to take a table and actually outline how you came to that. Hmm? But it will be good to hear from both Dr. Deepna, Dr. Anakha, and Dr. Reshma from their experience uh, to add to what Dr. Bhatt has already and if Dr. Indu is also would like to. Dr. Riyas. Go ahead, Dr. Deepna. Hello, sir. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So it's, uh, it was a very, uh, very good discussions that is going on, a very informative one. This will with with has a correct presentation of Vadashurata like symptoms in the that Buddha Buddha Pranashindi and also uh, with the conditions like the biomarkers as Sangarama has uh, said the biomarkers will be correctly evident in the patients and also in most of the patients the uh, purva rupas of the uh, Vadashurata lakshana that is the uh, involvement of other systems like the connective tissue disorders, uh, the eye manifestations, the manifestations of the skin, and also even the internal organ manifestations will be very evident. 
so uh, in these conditions all these uh, uh, lakshanas was very uh, means is very similar to the what is explained in the text so most of in those conditions mostly in kerala we go for a, a diagnosis of vadashunita comparable with the rheumatoid arthritis with more involvement of collagen and the deep tissues and also sir, on the age differences uh, also some changes was noted in the clinics because uh, uh, during the patients when it is an, an in a tender age Uh, the patients present with high grade of fever and also with this joint manifestations and uh, also when the uh, the condition of the ama that is presenting in the body that is with the travesta of the ama that is considering and the severity of the ama avastha pain was mostly correlated with uh, ama vata like okay. symptoms sir okay so what is your conclusion is this more like uh, ama vata or vata rakta Uh, it uh, according to my uh, uh, personal clinical experiences it is mostly dependent on the what are the clinical conditions that the patient what uh, from present. the evidence what is the data presented what would you like to conclude so far is there any conclusion you have on that so uh, uh, miss i mostly go with uh, sangana ma'am because uh, what i have seen is mostly similar to what she has told today okay okay in a different way doctor but it will be very great good if maybe 13th of january which is two weeks from now we can have a session actually just taking up uh, the in depth thing of the subject amavata versus uh, vata shodita and uh, that part maybe we could take it up and go really into detail so that we do justice to that both the data that you have doctor but maybe other cases we can present one report on that if so uh, if others have a view on this we can reserve it for 13 january i think it's an important discussion so let us not curtail that now because we are running against time the other part is any other observations dr bird dr deepna dr indu all other doctors other than uh, the comment on amavata versus other Uh, sir, uh, I have noticed this thing that, as in the history, it is telling that uh, he or she is having a history of constipation sixteen years, and even after treatment, it is not corrected much. Maybe for that reason, uh, she is not clearly treated with the condition because uh, she is having the pain in the same. And also, I think. Uh, not concentrated much uh, seem to be in this area actually because of course constipation may leads to so many diseases as well because it's a history of 15 years means it's a long long years so i need to know about what may done for that and doctor please respond yeah ah uh, sir actually she is having this constipation since 15 years and she is also taking homeopathic medications for that purpose when she came here he she withdraw that homeopathic medications and she go through ayurvedic medications and it will be in regular pattern but the last 2 to 3 3 days she having this constipation only who during the 21 days of treatment when we started the treatment after 3 4 days she is motion become regular and we observing daily we are writing in the klo how is the bowels how what is the consistency of that bowels it is complete evacuated so we are noticing in the klo we notice every day point we notice and at that time the time of discharge the last 2 to 3 days we can check to the klo the motion will be irregular in nature but the consistency is remaining same the motion irregular but semi solid consistency is coming but in past years it is hard in nature so that improvement we can notice after the treatment the consistency the hard consistency is come to the semi solid consistency that is an improvement in, in her constipation that's i want to say sir and one more thing i want to add sir like uh, before she is on the medication right homeopathic medication at that time also she 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 needs to put some strain for evacuation of stool 
like uh, during the treatment course itself she, the effort is not there she can easily pass her stool but it was not but, but it was only absent only one day that is on the treatment end day that should be write it as not regular because we write the uh, what is after the treatment at what the is date. the outcome at the date what is the outcome we written sir so that is a regular pattern but the during the treatments it is a regular and the consistency we are not using it is semi solid consistency that's the, that's the outcome sir one more point to add to your observation dr mohammad that the patient was on the last three days of treatment patient was on virechanam followed by two counts of shrashtik shali she had adequate uh, virechanam with good number of vegas so as you know it takes about 3 days to fill the colon she was on samsarjan krama so it takes around 3 days to normalize and restore the bowel function so that has been recorded as it is that patient has not passed motion however we cannot call it as constipation that has been persisting she has improved significantly from her ama vibanda all that those presentation my one more feeling you know i feel that you know she complained of uh, constipation for 15 years a very long very very chronic constipation see vata prakriti people who are having a grahani for a long time they complain of you know such kind of uh, 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 this one constipation this is my feeling probably he had a predisposing cause of uh, this particular arth you know rheumatoid arthritis uh, as grahani for, you know my feeling is like this uh, you know whether she had given any mohur baddham mohur dravam such kind of symptoms earlier or only constipation if at all she is having, she was having only constipation probably why this kind of constipation see constipation is a very simple problem you know and it can be completely cured you know by proper diet proper vihara ahara vihara and also proper you know medication it can be corrected even in any condition we can be it can be corrected Uh, but probably she had a grahani earlier could be there although she did not report of any altered bowel and constipation like that it was a consistent thing and also if you note her nidanas she was having an extreme erratic lifestyle diet stressful situation irregular habits so one was that second water intake sedentary lifestyle and two contradicting points that she was into excessive exercise ati vyayam in younger days followed by an extremely sedentary lifestyle so that could be one reason and before she came to us she was already on homeopathy medications which could have been an abrupt uh, intake of that like without analyzing constipation in terms of consistency frequency incomplete motion so that entire parameters of constipation could have been well analyzed so while she was here we looked into frequency consistency and clarity of bowel so all these three things were analyzed and hence she was advised further her her main prakriti was what was her main prakriti she was pitta kapha Okay, but uh, pit uh, what you know pit the kind of people usually have uh, you know slightly uh, some some slightly you know motion they won't suffer from constipation for a long time. Only what are people will be having uh, you know uh, constipation for a long time. So whether the prakriti work. Uh, okay. So as you can see in that. chart of samprapti which was there there was vat avarana also which was happening kafanu bandha kafanu bandha so those maybe that kapha prakriti itself could be a madhyam kosha but then when it gets mixed with vayu kapha vat samyoga that is something which is very common to have constipation and more than constipation and incomplete bowel 
कार्ष कार्षनोष्ण कृतित्वम कंपानाह शकत ग्रहान दिस इज द एक्चुअल यू नो सिम अत प्रकृति पर्सन इज हैविंग अ शकृत ग्रह फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम जो पित्त प्रकृति पर्सन विल नॉट हैव यू नो अ शकृत ग्रह फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम आई जस्ट सिंस एट दिस पॉइंट आई वुड लाइक टू क्लेरिफाई Uh, you know, are we talking about prakriti or vikriti? Because just the point that you could be a kapha pitta prakriti person, but or pitta kapha per, but uh, the thing is due to uh, a vikriti, and actually many diabetics, particularly kapha ja, you know, pramihis, also present with constipation and other such issues. So is it? Uh, it temporary one. No, I mean the chronic constipation. Maybe fifteen years. I agree that part is there. Okay. Fifteen years, a person who is suffering from that means his prakriti is actually, you know, this is a classical, you know, reference. Karsya karsnyoshna kamitvam kampana ha shakat grahan. This is a okay. vata prakriti person is always this kind of, you know, uh, this one. So this is my feeling. Pitta prakriti, pitta kapha prakriti people may not have constipation for a long time. Vata prakriti people is are having always constipation. Thank you, doctor, for this informative session. Especially thanks to Dr. Reshma for the going through the samprapti uh, chakra uh, uh, very uh, beautifully. Uh, this was an energetic session on rheumatoid arthritis and uh, T2 target approach. Thank you, doctors, for the uh, uh, engaging session, and thank you all the vidyas for participating in the discussion. Thank you, everyone. We'll meet next year with the uh, one more energetic session. Thank you, everyone.